Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy, with another special guest on the Gratitude Podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And when I say special guest, this one has emphasis on the word special. Mr. Jason Duperve, I've known, gosh, I thought it was 10 or 15 years. Turns out it's about 25 to 30. Known him a long time, very bright individual, one of my friends I look to for guidance and mentorship from time to time, Mr. Jason Duperve. Jason, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Dave. Great to see you. It's been a long time. Uh, I was in Seattle a little while ago. Mm. Love to see you again as soon as I get up there again. We will definitely do it. I know you're down in Portland now and had been in Chicago or Illinois prior to that and so forth. So the whole purpose of these podcasts, as I call them, is they're basically an interview, is to really take people and get their perspective on what we're going through. And in this case, maybe there's going to be a tip or an uh, insight or a thought that maybe somebody could really learn from. So I've got four or five questions for you. And my first question is, what has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic this last month or so? I think uh, getting out and walking around a little bit, the neighborhood, go to a park. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, you know, I've, um, I've, I've tended to, you know how we all have a rhythm in life. So mm -hmm. when you're 30 years old, you think I need to, um, you know, I'm thinking about my career. I'm thinking about in the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, what I've done is I know this is not a permanent situation. So in order to cope a little better, I've just narrowed my time frame a little bit. So it's uh, day by day, say hour by hour, or I've nice. blocked my day into four or five different areas like mm. work, personal things I need to do and, and uh, relaxing in the evening. Um, you know, my daughter's here, which is a great thing. So, um, that, I think that's kind of the way I cope with things is uh, when there's uncertainty. And, and by the way, you know, I'm in the markets, so that's kind mm -hmm. of how my life works. Oh, when the markets cool. get really fast, they go up fast, down, down fast. You really have to slow down and uh, kind of look at life in shorter increments. That's almost kind of like chunking out a little bit too and segmenting it out and so forth, personal, professional, and so forth. And you said not only the markets, which of course have been a huge impact of this as well, but uh, regarding uncertainty, and here I am, the gratitude guy, do you notice that what you're grateful for has changed since we've gone through this pandemic in the last month or so? Has it been the same before? Is it different? And if so, what's changed? No, it's it's been the same, I have to say. Uh, as you know, because we talked a lot, uh, I, I went through some uh, personal issues probably, uh, well, 2016, and right. that gave me a lot of uh, perspective on life and what's important, what isn't important. Um, and so for me, I, I'm grateful every day for every, you know, I'll look at something I have or someone I have in my life uh, Jill and I get up every day and it's like, um, you know, it's, uh, it's like a miracle that we're together. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were apart 45 years right. and recently got married. So it's, uh, it's just a, it's a miracle and I'm, I'm very grateful for it, but I don't think anything's changed in 2016. A lot changed. You know, I had a lot of different expectations from life and it's almost just the opposite. Well, one of the reasons I asked that question, that's a good answer. I think that one of the things this pandemic has done is it also helps to realign priorities. And there are people that just get things out of whack. Oh, my goodness, we couldn't get the reservation at the restaurant. You know, and like, ooh, like, like the end of the world is coming. And now we got people dying all the time. So I think it helps people to get things into a proper perspective, perspective, if you will. And so thinking about all these 30 or 35 years I've known you and, and how you operate and always on the go and busy and juggling a lot of balls and that type of thing. Uh, what would you offer as far as a tip or a thought or an idea to a person that maybe some of the things they can be doing during this time of being housebound or shelter in place and that kind of thing. And I don't ever worry about a guy like you, because as I say, you've got a ton of things going on, but, but what might you offer to somebody as some things they could be doing during this time? Yeah, that's a, a very good question. Um, in fact, I was thinking about it. I was seeing some pictures of some friends and their kids and everything, and they're bonding with their families. They're all at home and they're playing, uh, you know, they're doing puzzles, playing board games and things like that. Um, it's, it's not my style, I have to say. I tend to be, I would use this opportunity as a time to learn something new that I know nothing about. For example, 
again, on the investment side, which is what excites me, is uh, potentially reading a book on cryptocurrencies, digital, digital assets. What are they about? Do you think they'll stick? Will they not? Uh, maybe learn cooking uh, on the personal side, something that you've always wanted to do. But, um, you know, the world is getting, uh, again, the time frames are getting a lot shorter over time. Mm -hmm. So uh, people that start a career today will probably change careers, you know, three times as, as much as we yeah. might have in our careers because things are just getting obsolete a lot faster. So I look at some books, try to read some books. It'll give me, a, a like Alvin Toffler, um, Future Shock. Right. Is one book I used to read, you know, back in the 70s on trying to get an idea of what the future is going to look like and how I can best position myself in it. Mm-hmm. That's so good. That's, you know, I try, I would use, I tend to not want to watch TV over and over and over again. Right. Um, you know, although I was, I've gotten older, I accept it more, but I would be looking for what, what's the, my, when I get back to my job, for example, not me personally, but a lot of people have to think things are going to change and yeah. whether they change right away, which may not, but in a year, somebody's going to figure something out and my job may be out the window. Yeah, so it's, it's I, that true. would be something that I would look for, uh, and particularly in view of the fact that a lot of the people that are um, uh, quarantined mm -hmm. may not have jobs when they get back. Sure. I mean, if this thing lasts much longer, a lot of businesses are just going to give up. Yeah, take sure. business, business interruption uh, insurance and and be done. It's true, and I think uh, you've heard this term a lot too. You're going to see a new normal. And what will be considered something from the past will no longer be uh, necessarily uh, happen in the future. And I think also uh, you mentioned TV and, and the, I send out a Monday morning minute every Monday morning. That's about a minute long, of course, on gratitude. But the one that went out today is can you watch too much TV? And it really is. I think it's fine to be informed, but I think TV can, t can send you further down into the dumpster if you're not careful and so forth. So, so speaking of that, of kind of along the line of doing things, those are great tips for people of some of the things they can be doing. Uh, what what are you doing now that's going to kind of help you hit the ground running and when this thing ends because it's going to end and we don't know when but we know it's going to end and it'll be a fac uh, vaccine it'll be the, the, the loss of or the social distancing going back to normal whatever that normal is but what are some of the things you're thinking about doing now while you have this time so when it's end ending you can really get off to a quick start yeah so one of the things i've been doing is organizing my files on my computer Oh, nice. Because I have a lot of files, and uh, I've also, I also tend to uh, do um, uh, belt and suspenders a lot, which means maybe I copy something and save it in different places and then back oh, it up. Nice. So what I've been doing is kind of going through and uh, removing duplicate files, just something. I mean, it sounds, you know, really boring, and it is. But it, when I, and especially for work, it, it'll be very useful because then I can, um, you know, I'm, I'm working on kind of that structure, getting people so uh, I can set up my files mm -hmm. so that I can share it with everyone. So if something happens to me, someone in my office could just take it over right, and right. see what's going on. And we have redundancy all over the place. Um, other than that, it, I have not really been affected other than I travel a lot. So I've mm -hmm. been curtailed on that. But I do a lot of research. I have a lot of legal documents. You know, I'm still building. Mm -hmm. So I'm still at the phase where, uh, you know, I, I haven't really gone out and talked to get, try to get new clients. Right. Uh, so that's kind of what I've been doing is kind of, you know, cleaning out the garage, that kind of stuff, getting rid of the, the old crap. Because there, there's a book on it somewhere, I believe, uh, how to get rid of everything, you know, mm -hmm. I can't remember what it's called. It's I probably the, the, the magic art of tidying up or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, I read that. That was, it really was helpful. I mean, it really yeah. feels better when you get all that stuff organized. Yeah. And you don't have to look at something again, you right. know, you've looked at it, you've decided, you know, do I really need my, um, you know, my Palm Pilot from, you know, yeah, yeah. 1991. Mr. Uh, B, you're aware of how old you were. I thought you were so much younger. <laughs> so, so that's been, uh, I'm, so I'm trying to do those things. So when I get back up and running, I don't have same file in five different places and I'm organizing things in a, in a way that will help 
when that, I come out. Of this. And that's, it's a great, something that's, a, that's a great, oh, sorry. That's a great tip because I did kind of the same thing. And it was in a couple of cases, it was really like the whole bureau with all the drawers who were messed up the files. I went through a bunch of things. And sure enough, a day or two later, I was so glad I did because I found some stuff that, you know, and that those aren't at the top of your, your to-do list. Let's face it, that when you get those low end things done, gosh, it's a great feeling. You find things you were looking for. So that's, that's a great tip. Yeah, yeah. And it's something you wouldn't do normally. Exactly. I mean, you say you want to do it. But then that also, I find that to be kind of an emotional drag as well. Mm -hmm. you know, I need to do this. I'm not doing it. Right. And it's like, you know, it's now, you know, uh, 1,413 days now that I haven't done that. Mm -hmm. just, yeah. <laughs> just emotional drag I don't need. No, that's, that's a good point. So, so my final question to kind of wrap up is does Jason have a quote or a philosophy or a mantra or something that kind of is the overarching sort of way you run your life? I mean, I've had people say, um, you know, it's um, the, uh, this too shall pass or something like that. Do you have sort of a philosophy that kind of sustains you through this and any other time as terms of how your philosophy is to life? You know, I take uh, all the good things from P. Rose. You know, he was a hard worker, mm -hmm. gave his body up. So uh, this isn't something he said, but I always think I may not, not be the smartest guy in the room, but I'm the hardest worker in the room. Mm -hmm. and I can outwork mm -hmm. anybody. That's great. That's great. That applies to a lot of things, too. So yeah, actually, just for being persistent. Yeah. Dave, really yeah. made off in my life. Just whatever, you know, when I see an opportunity, and I, I want to grab it. I just focus all my energy on it. And faith also hel helps in that. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think uh, I was mentioning to you something about Zoom the other day, and I had some issues that I was, it took me two or three days to figure out. It was frustrating, but I thought, you know, why did it get solved? Because I stuck with it. And so there's your persistent uh, aspect to it and just don't ever give up. And, you know, Winston Churchill, don't ever, ever, ever give up. But it sure, it sure pays in the long run and uh, everything will eventually get solved. So, well, listen, thank you, my friend. That was just excellent. I appreciate those tips and thoughts as I knew I would get some great tidbits from you. So thank you so much. And we will chat soon. My pleasure, Dave. All the best. Speak you soon. You bet. You too.